one percent of the U.S. Uh, uh, most uh, <laughs> elite or, 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 or people in the in the in the top top bracket. Uh, but the oil wealth is almost equal to 42, 45 percent of the mass population, and and that actually in, in many developed countries have the same trend on that. Well, the threats to globalization today are coming from within countries, not from between countries, and we think it's this, um, if you like, disrespect or this separation or leaving these people behind who favor populist solutions that are the real threat to globalization. One of the things you, you mentioned in this book about uh, inequality, and also is the, the one of the things that we notice uh, has been widely uh, happening around the world. I mean, as globalization deepens, uh, we, we see the inequality. Uh, for example, we, we notice that, you know, for example, the, the, the 1% of the US uh, uh, most uh, <laughs> elite or, 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 or people in the, in the, in the top, top bracket, uh, that their wealth is almost equal to 42, 40, five percent of the mass population and and that actually in, in many developed countries have the same trend on that and whereas also the uh, the company is, is going global but then they are not probably benefiting exactly uh the home country or the host country of that and that that's that's where for example nafta was blamed for hovering out the midwest and <laughs> not benefiting uh, us on, on on that so so and, and now china probably uh, become uh, another reason to, 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 to bash for as well, because, uh, uh, because uh, if, if the multinationals, the Fortune 500 is not really, uh, uh, you know, having put, put their uh, wealth offshore somewhere, it is, you know, that is the, 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 the politics going on. I, I was talking to, uh, you know, Martin Wolf. He was saying uh, capitalism is global, but democracy is local. So if the if the population locally is not happy, then they actually politician needs to find a, a, a scapegoat for that, and and China easily to become a, a scapegoat very often. So so what do you think about this inequality issue, and uh, where where the gap is getting wider and wider in the last uh, several decades, and also even during the pandemic, I mean we see the, the one percent is getting even wealthy. Uh, uh, stock market is uh, all time high now. So. Uh, how we explain that? Explain that, and uh, and uh, what, what are the true challenges for for our contemporary world? Yeah, so I think you have to be careful here to separate different kinds of inequality, right? So there's inequality in income, which is what perhaps we first think about, and the top one percent is mostly about inequality in income, and then what you were talking about at the end there, which I think is becoming increasingly important. And some politicians in the United States, like Elizabeth Warren, for instance, be focusing much more on wealth inequality than on income inequality. And as you say, there's been this enormous explosion of wealth inequality during the pandemic, much more so in the United States than in Europe, for example, because the US stock market has gone up so much. And largely because the big tech companies are here in the US and it's their enormous success during the pandemic um, which has driven up those stock market um, values. But there's also the inequality we write about in our book, which is the inequality of respect, and of, which in the US seems to come with education. And to us, that's the deepest problem because the people, these um, people without a PA, you know, have been sort of left behind. They're not politically represented. And what you say is exactly right. Our colleague Bob Cahane used to say that the major force today in international relations is what is happening within countries. That's exactly like what Martin Wolf said about democracy is local and globalization is global. Well, the threats to globalization today are coming from within countries, not from between countries. And we think it's this, um, if you like, disrespect of the separation or leaving these people behind who favor populist solutions that are the real threat to globalization. I mean, you know, if you get another decade of, of Mr. Trump, um, then it's not clear how much will be left of globalization at the end of that. Uh, and also, we have a case to, to serve you with the